Realistically, doing drugs, you die. These were the words of a young rapper who could not have guessed that he was going to leave this world by these very words. Chicago rapper Gerard Higgins, who we've all come to know as Juice World, was no doubt one of the greatest talents of this century. But all of that fame came crashing down when he made a very poor decision in the last few moments of his life. It was about 1 p.m. on the fateful day of December 8, 2019, when rapper Juice World passed away after suffering a seizure in Chicago's Midway Airport shortly after a flight from California. Juice, whose real name was Gerard Higgins, was immediately taken to Advocate Christ Medical Center in Illinois, and at the time they arrived at the hospital, not much was known about what caused the seizure. I mean, it could have been anything, right? But unknown to the world, the mystery behind the tragic seizure that Juice World suffered could be traced back to the last 10 hours of his life. Being a celebrity of such high status, an immediate autopsy was carried out, and it was revealed that Juice's seizure was caused by an overdose of hard drugs. We've all seen it before. Lil Peep, Mac Miller, Coolio, and even a legend like DMX. These rappers were snatched to the world beyond after suffering a tragic overdose. But the story of Juice World is unlike any of these rappers. The authorities carried out some investigations and an autopsy, and it was revealed that Juice World had in fact passed on from overdosing on hard drugs. We now know what caused the death of Chicago rapper Juice World, According to the Cook County Medical Examiner, he died as a result of oxycodone and codeine toxicity. His death has been ruled an accident. Juice World died December 8th after suffering a seizure and cardiac arrest at Midway Airport. The authorities further revealed that first responders did all they could, but there was already a mix-up of drugs in Juice World's system. According to reports, a federal agent who was at the airport to search the plane administered the opioid antidote, Narcan, to Juice World while he was convulsing. The question that bugged everyone was, why did he take that much drugs? A couple of hours before landing, the pilot on the plane Juice World was in had snitched to the feds that Juice and his entourage were traveling with some illegal stuff. According to insider sources, the rapper and his entourage had 70 pounds of weed, some guns, alongside some pills. But these startling pictures here, obtained by TMZ, show why federal authorities were taking a closer look at the flight. 70 pounds of cannabis found inside 41 vacuum sealed bags. Police say they were discovered by state police canines after arrival. Chicago police report no one from the plane claimed ownership of the luggage. Inside the airport. Of course, getting caught with all of that was going to be a huge scandal for Juice, but would a scandal not have been a better option? Now the feds were more prepped to nab Juice World, but what they weren't prepared for was to have a convulsing, overdosing young man in their hands. And I bet the pilot who snitched didn't think it'd get that far either. On getting to the Chicago airport, the feds made their way to a private jet to carry on their search based on the tip they got. The frightened Juice World immediately swallowed a large amount of the opioid Percocet, adding to the cocaine, which was already in his system from the previous hours before boarding. He was taking pills on board. Drugs are included in the culture now, unfortunately. Yeah. In the few minutes that built up to the rapper's tragic demise, he suffered a medical episode and immediately went into cardiac arrest before he was taken to the hospital where he passed away. The search still went on, and authorities recovered drugs and firearms in their search and arrested two members of his entourage. According to reports, the FBI allegedly began their search of his plane and belongings just before he started having a seizure. They also did their best to save the rapper's life during the unfortunate incident as their medical agents administered two doses of Narcan. They managed to kick him up briefly as he was unconscious, but he was still knocked out. We are sure to give you quality stories straight from our inside sources on the streets of major rap cities. Just make sure to subscribe and stay tuned to Rap Hive to get first-hand information. There have been many theories about Juice World's passing, and while most of them were spread by random fans on the internet, no one expected his ex-girlfriend, Ali Lari, to spearhead some of these theories. In November 2022, what seemed like a fun night to the rapper's ex-girlfriend turned into a bit of a media rant after she hopped on her Instagram Live as she talked to Juice World fans who called her out for trying to make money off the rapper's name. However, Ali Lali didn't take it lightly as she went on a full-blown rant claiming that Juice World didn't lose his life because of an overdose. Literally, I'm like, oh, Boba, you guys think he died from a drug overdose. You're wrong. You're wrong. Literally, you're wrong. So stop. Okay? Shut the There's a lot of y'all don't know that I agree 
lawsuit myself while I let y'all grieve and talk. It was, however, revealed that it wasn't her first time to speak on the mystery surrounding Juice World's death. According to insider sources, Ali Lari had shared a private video with a friend whom she trusted. Unfortunately for her, the video leaked to a few online sources, and it didn't take a while before what she said in the video became viral content. Ali had claimed that her life was in danger because she knew the real truth behind Juice World's death, and the people involved were after her. According to Lari, everyone around them, including Juice World's friends and members of his team, was aware that he was going to pass away the day of his tragic demise, but none of them could stop it. She further revealed that she couldn't speak about any of the details of Juice World's passing at the time, but she will when the time was right. However, she wanted to ensure that she would be safe before speaking about the truth and exposing the people behind Juice World's death. According to Lottie, the people behind Juice World's passing are also after her life, and they tried their very best to make sure she wouldn't be able to expose them. But she's doing her very best. Whenever she feels safe, she will share her story. Would it be insane to believe the love of Juice World's life? Did he really not die from a drug overdose? While many fans struggled with the tragic demise of Juice World, others couldn't ignore the spiritual fact that Juice World may have, in fact, brought his death upon himself. Do you believe in these spiritual plays? Could this have been why the young rapper lost his life? As part of the new generation of emo rap artists, Juice World was widely regarded as a talented and promising artist, unfortunately. I'm really in awe right now, but uh, you know, I just want to thank God. I want to thank all my supporters. I want to thank all my fans, and yeah, I'm glad to be here, it's a blessing. The rapper's career was shortened after he passed, tragically. The lifestyle of the rapper prior to his death has made both fans and critics believe that he had sold his soul to the devil in exchange for fame. About a couple of months before he met his end, Juice World had constantly rapped about his death, like he knew something was coming for him, something dark and spiritual. Even in his lyrics, he mused about his own mortality, referencing the long list of famous singers who died by the age of 27. In his song Legends, Juice World rapped, What's the 27 Club? We ain't making it past 21. I've been going through paranoia. Lyrics of this same nature kept on popping up in his songs, and this became a worry for his fans. Many of Juice World's fans believe that on the track Confide, he had been told about the way he was going to die and the exact manner in which it would happen. He rapped on the track, I'm getting high before the flight, LAX to the shy, memories on my mind, been reflecting on my life, something don't feel right. Was it a coincidence that the rapper was high before he boarded the private jet to Chicago? Or was there something truly spiritual at play? Guessing that it was something dark and mysterious wasn't a far reach, as Juice World was seen in an Instagram Live video claiming that he had sold his soul to the devil. Was that his bargain for fame and wealth? To not make it past 21? The video which the rapper filmed via his Instagram Live showed him alongside other celebrities as they partook in what seemed like an initiation ritual. He was heard saying in the video, Hi right, y'all, I'm finna sell my soul. I'm gonna hit you up when I'm done. Hi right, y'all. I'm finna sell my soul. I'm gonna hit y'all when I'm through. I'm gonna be rich as hell. Alright? Look, look, do sell his soul. It ain't look take out. too long. Illuminati, man. <laughs> What'd you say, <laughs> Cook? <laughs> After seeing Juice World's post, his fans were pretty convinced that he had sold his soul to the devil and that something dangerous was coming for him. But after facing much backlash from his fans worldwide, Juice World decided to retract his statements about selling his soul. He claimed that it was all a joke as he said, I'm a God-fearing man. You really think I sold my soul? Y'all crazy as hell, boy. I'm a god fan person, y'all ass slow. <laughs> but how does one claim to be God-fearing and yet dabble with diabolical things? Or could he have been telling the truth? It certainly was no coincidence that he passed away the way he did. Tragic, no doubt, but a coincidence? It wasn't, especially after paying attention to the things he rapped about. Juice was just 21 years old when he died, and it all happened after he said in his music that he wasn't making it past 21. To this day, that has been one of the most accurate self-predictions in the rap industry. Juice World's demise was one of the toughest pills his fans had to swallow, no pun intended. In the wake of his demise, many of his fans were in disbelief with the hopes that news of his tragic death was untrue. Hey, Juice World, that! Uh, Juice World, I'm talking to Cook. You know, you know Juice World? Nigga do the music and shit? Let me go see about this. 
It didn't take a while before his fans began building up conspiracy theories, claiming that Juice World didn't pass away. This morning, so many questions as to how a seemingly healthy 21-year-old could die so unexpectedly. They couldn't help but point to his music. Shortly after the news of Juice World's passing made media rounds, several fan theories sprung up, claiming that the rapper wasn't dead. Fans believe this because not only was his death very sudden, but he had often talked about escaping from the troubles of the world. Fans couldn't help but talk about his hit song, Legends, where he rapped the following lyrics. I've been going through paranoia, so I always gotta keep a gun. That's the world we live in now. Yeah, hold on, just hear me out. Many fans believe in this song, Juice World was predicting his own death, as he had just celebrated his 20th birthday a couple of days before he passed away in 2019. The lyrics of the song saw Juice World reflecting on whether or not he had achieved a legendary status, and if he had, he didn't want the status at all. Fans also made reference to Juice World's song, All Girls Are The Same, where he sings, I'm a jealous boy, really feel like John Lennon. Many fans agreed that it was more than just a coincidence that Juice World died on December 8th, the same date John Lennon passed away. And just like Juice World did, John Lennon always told a few of his friends that he was never going to make it to age 40. Sadly, he died when he was 40 years old. It was even more shocking that just like Juice World predicted his death by singing that he was high before his flight to Chicago, John Lennon had done the same, as he predicted that he was either going to lose his life in a plane crash or someone would pop him off. But while there is proof that Juice World passed away from the overdose, some fans still believe that the rapper just might be alive, hidden somewhere. Would you hide if you had all that fame? While some fans claim that Juice World never went to Chicago on the plane, but instead went to the Bahamas, others claim that they visited the hospital where he was allegedly checked into and revealed that no one with the name Gerard Anthony Higgins was admitted. The tragic passing of Juice World was no doubt a tragic blow to everyone he loved, both family and friends. So, it was no surprise when tributes upon tributes began flowing after he passed away. Robert Ski Mask, the slump god, was quite shaken over Juice's demise. He shared a post via Instagram where he wrote, I love you so much, you didn't deserve this. I can't explain how much it hurts me to lose you. This life, bruh. Rest in peace, you know I'll carry your energy forever. I can't lose any more brothers. Rapper Lil Nas X wrote via Twitter, RIP Juice. So sad how often this is happening lately to young talented rising artists. Chance the rapper was beyond heartbroken after the young Juice World passed away. He took to his Instagram to share his tribute as he wrote, he knows our hearts. I really wish we had more talks like the one night in LA. Dude, this is ridiculous. Millions of people, not just in Chicago, but around the world are hurting because of this and don't know what to make of it. I'm sorry. Love you and God bless your soul. Before his tour in Australia, Juice was mainly in Los Angeles, enjoying his life with his friends. An old friend Juice had met in Chicago, the producer chased the money, remembers being at the rapper's house a few months before his death. I pulled up millions and millions of beats and he was just rapping. Chase the Money says, I tell you bro, he was in a good spirit. I was happy for him. Big house with a king pool. Just everything. It was good. I was happy to see he had his together. One month before Juice died, DJ Benny Blanco worked on a song with him. Blanco said Juice's friends all told him that Juice was in high spirits and excited about the future. It was always jokes. I literally can't even find the picture where you aren't laughing or in the middle of telling a funny story. I'm thankful for the time we spent together. Your friend and family are in my prayers. Love you, bro. Another friend of Juice named Kudo narrated how his last interaction with the late artist went differently. Kudo said that he and their mutual friend, Asap Bari, had a deep conversation about his escalating drug use with Juice. Kudo explained how he warned Juice that if he kept up his habits, he might end up dying at a young age. We were just talking about some of the stuff that was going on with him. And now to have self-control, Kudo said. Not trying to be his parent or anything, but just being his friend. The fateful evening of the unfortunate incident was cold to everyone who cared about Juice, and reporters could not get any comment from those on the plane with him that day. Later, there were only assumptions about what happened in the rapper's final minutes. Knowing how he was that week, knowing how high he was acting the night before flying out, I'm willing to believe that he honestly just overdosed, Lord said. Lord further assumed that Juice may have taken pills just to stay high during a potential detainment or interrogation by the police. He might have been like, oh, we're being detained? What if I can't take anything for two days? What if I have to get booked and get bailed out? I'm not trying to come down. I want to make sure I'm high. 
he said. During a tour of Australia that ended just a week before Juice's death, Lord and those of the close to him finally confronted him about his drug use. We had just broken down a lot of barriers with him. Lord explains, I and a couple other people had come to him in tears like, we're worried about you and we're scared we're going to lose you if you keep up these habits and we have to do something. And he willingly agreed. Could Juice World really be hiding somewhere in the world? Or did he really sell his soul and his life for wealth and fame?